So pretty much every breakaway club has withdrawn from the controversial Super League, but Real Madrid and Barcelona are yet to take themselves out of the equation. It's quite a strange move from both the Spanish giants, who would be left alone if they carried on putting their eggs in one basket. On a side note, Manchester United pulled out of the competition, but it appears that the club's fans are not happy with just an Ed Woodward resignation. Ahead of a training session, fans broke into the Carrington training ground and demanded that the Glazer family sell the club. But hey, Orlo was at the wheel and he calmed down the fans, who eventually left knowing that the club might be in good hands. Ilkay Gundogan was never sold on the Super League idea, but the German international isn't a big fan of the new Champions League format either. Eric Lamella is nearing the end of his time at Tottenham Hotspur and could be set for a return to Italy this summer. Zlatan Ibrahimovic has just signed a new contract at AC Milan, and that's just a sneak peek of what's coming your way. Before we do that, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to stay informed. Ibra at Milan for one more year While the current campaign is not quite over, AC Milan are already looking to get their business for next season done early. The Serie A giants have finally convinced Latan Ibrahimovic to sign a one-year contract extension believed to be worth around 6 million euros, plus a million euros in bonuses. The Swede has been Milan's top performer this season, and despite the fact that he turns 40 later this year, he's got a lot left in the tank. AC Milan has announced that the club has extended Zlatan Ibrahimovic's contract. A statement on the club's website read, AC Milan is the club for which Zlatan has played the most in Italy. After scoring 84 goals in 130 appearances with the Rossoneri, the Swedish striker will continue to be wearing the red and black jersey next season. While he's had to deal with a few injury issues this season, Ibra's performance levels have not gone down at all. Had he remained injury-free this season, Milan might have at least closed the gap on league leaders into Milan. Nonetheless, the Rossoneri are heading in the right direction, and Ibra would be influential for Stefano Pioli's side next season, where they're likely to return to the Champions League. RB Leipzig making Nagelsmann arrangements Red Bull Salzburg coach Jesse Marsh says that he would like to manage RB Leipzig in the future amid reports that the American could succeed Julian Nagelsmann at the Bundesliga club. Marsh was Ralf Ragnick's assistant at the club a few years ago before he became the manager of the Austrian side. At the age of 47, the American has gained valuable experience managing one of the most exciting sides in Europe, and a move to Germany does make sense. Of course, I understand the club very well. If you ask me what would fit best, RB Leipzig is of course a top idea, Marsh told Sky when asked about reports linking him to the Bundesliga team. Marsh has been earmarked as one of the favourites for the role if Nagelsmann ends up signing for Bayern Munich, who are on the hunt for a new manager, following Hansi Flick's admission that he wants to leave Bavaria. Nagelsmann had previously been linked with Borussia Dortmund, but Marco Rosa has now agreed to take charge of them at the end of the season. Marsh, meanwhile, is also in the frame for the Celtic job, as the Scottish Giants look for a permanent replacement for Neil Lennon. Lewandowski has no retirement plans At the age of 32, Robert Lewandowski is still one of the most fearsome strikers on the planet. He's been scoring goals for fun in the Bundesliga, and the striker claims that he's raring to go for the next five years. That is definitely not a great sign for the other teams, since the pole has been in amazing form in the last decade or so. While speaking to reporters, the 32-year-old has said that he hasn't really given a thought about retiring in the next three or four years. The player says that he's hopeful he can play even longer than five years. With two years left on his contract at Bayern Munich, we expect Lewandowski to stay put and hang up his boots at the club, where he's achieved a lot of success. United urge to tie down Pogba As things stand, Paul Pogba has only a year left on his current deal, which means that he could leave Manchester United as a free agent next summer. The France international has been in a rich vein of form in the last few months, despite spending some time on the treatment table. However, former United player Lee Sharp believes that Pogba is a class above most Premier League players and that his former club should do everything they can to tie down the midfielder to a long-term deal. 
While speaking to the Mirror, Sharp says that United must offer Pogba a long-term contract as quickly as possible, since the 27-year-old has everything that you need in a world-class player. If we can get him fit and keep him fit and give him a run in the team, I think he'll win games for you. I know defensively he's a little bit lacking at times, but I think sometimes the greatest players that go forward and create for you are not great defensively. Speaking to reporters earlier this year, Pogba said that he's enjoying his time at Old Trafford while hinting that there's a possibility of a contract extension. United would be eager to commit their star player to a new deal after it was reported that star player Bruno Fernandes is willing to sign a new deal at Old Trafford as long as Paul Pogba does the same. The Portugal international has arguably been the club's best player over the past year and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would be eager to sign him to a new deal as well. Lamella nearing Tottenham exit According to reports, Tottenham are seriously considering putting Eric Lamella on the transfer market. The Argentine international joined a club from AS Roma and has never been able to show a lot of consistency during his time in London. The player himself is eager to return to Italy where he played the best football of his career and it's now being reported that Spurs are expecting nothing more than 10 million euros for the left-footed forward. Napoli have been credited with an interest and could make their move this summer. Gundogan not a fan of new Champions League format While Ilkay Gundogan wasn't happy with Manchester City's role in creating the European Super League, the German international is also not happy with the new Champions League format and says that it is just the lesser of two evils. Amid the chaos created by the Super League's announcement, UEFA's new format was pretty much ignored. However, as the dust settles, it becomes clear that the new changes aren't that great either. Using his Twitter handle, the City midfielder asked people about the new format and questioned the sensibility of the revision. The new format, which comes into effect in 2024, would see 36 sides in group stages, replaced by a single league of two groups, with the top eight sides in both leagues qualifying for the knockout stages of the competition. Teams that finish between 9th and 24th would play two-legged playoffs. France has also been given an extra qualifying spot, which means that five league earned sides could gain entry to the competition. Well, isn't it becoming a little bit too much? I mean, the Super League was rubbish, but the new Champions League format isn't too great either. What are your thoughts? Why Madrid and Barca don't want to leave ESL Alright, so almost every breakaway club has decided to withdraw from the atrocious concept that we've come to know as the European Super League. However, both Real Madrid and Barcelona are on the same page for the first time in their history since they don't want to leave the competition. Manchester United, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, Inter Milan and Atletico Madrid have all withdrawn, but Barca are one of the four founding clubs still on board, and Barcelona chief Laporta is not yet ready to give up on the initiative. While speaking to the media, Laporta says that the Super League is a necessity for his team. Florentino Perez, his opposite number at Real Madrid, is of the same opinion and believes that the Super League would be the competition that's going to save football. The Madrid Supremo is one of the staunchest supporters of the concept and despite getting a lot of hatred for it, is refusing to budge. Nine of the 12 founding teams have withdrawn after being heavily criticized for being part of the competition. But Perez says that big clubs have every right to enjoy more winnings since they contribute more to football in a financial sense. Perez also has a lot to say to those teams that have deserted the competition and revealed that the contracts signed were binding, which means that all nine clubs could face some time in court. However, in order to understand Perez and Laporta's insistence, you need to look at the state of both the club's finances. Madrid are financially not in a strong position to sign the best players. Moreover, the current renovation project at the Santiago Bernabeu has been a drain on their resources. Barcelona, on the other hand, could go bust if they continue to spend heavily on players that they can't afford. With net debt nearing the 1 billion euro mark, the Catalonians are desperate for some cash injection which is why they don't want to ditch the Super League. However, what's the point of these two Spanish clubs and Juventus staying in the competition when they don't have any other clubs willing to participate? 
Super League does sound like an instance where all the lads would plan for a night out without informing their missus. But on a serious note, Super League is over and no matter how desperate the situation is for these clubs, it's high time for them to start implementing measures where they don't spend so rashly in the transfer market and then start complaining about their financial issues. A lot of clubs are going through financial issues at the moment and a lack of TV rights income is not the only reason behind that. All these clubs are in a financial crisis because they've been spending more than they had and didn't think long term. There's a balance that was completely let go of and that's what these clubs are paying for. So yeah, move on from this. The Super League isn't coming back. Well, not for now at least.